Chu Ray, say about these doubts? Practice letting go of something small. Notice that the craving doesn't last and that there's a little sense of relief when you let it pass. That's a little taste of freedom. The fourth noble truth, the path. The Buddha taught that by living ethically, practicing metta, dash, chion, and developing wisdom and compassion, we can end the suffering. We create by resisting, running from, and misunderstanding reality. The fourth noble truth is the path that summarizes the yes, dash, sentio elements to recovery, or awakening, and leads to the ending of suffering. It provides an instructive practice for investigating and become dash. Being aware of the conditioned responses we cling to. These are the eight factors of the path. 1. Wise understanding. 2. Wise intention. 3. Wise speech. 4. Wise action. 5. Wise livelihood. 6. Wise effort. 7. Wise mindfulness. 8. Wise concentration. These eight factors can be divided into three groups. The wisdom group of understanding and intention. The ethics group of speech, action, and livelihood. The concentration group of effort, mindfulness, and concentration. Each of us will understand and practice each aspect of this. Eightfold path in our own way. We develop our wisdom, ethical practice, and concentration as far as we can in any given moment. As we come to a deeper understanding of the Four Noble Truths, we're able to bring more effort and concentration to letting go of our greed, hatred, and confusion. Our ethical development will cause us to reflect more deeply on these sources of our unwise actions. The Eightfold Path is a way of life that each of us follows in. Practices to the best of our current understanding and capacity. The Path can serve as both a religious and non-religious journey. For many people, their Buddhist practice includes prayer, worship, and ceremony. It is up to you to decide whether to include these practices as part of your recovery path. Inquiry of the Fourth Noble Truth. Colon. Understanding that recovery and the ending of suffering is possible. What is your path to recovery and ending the suffering of addiction? Be honest about the challenges you might face, and the tools and resources you will use to meet those challenges. What behaviors can you change to more fully support your recovery? What does it mean to you to take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha for your recovery? The Eightfold Path. We've found that it's useful to make inquiry and investigation a normal part of our everyday routine, especially when we're feeling un dash. Comfortable emotions are facing tough decisions. We can take a moment to pause and sit with what we're experiencing, identify it, and simply allow it to be with compassion and without judgment. Then use the Eightfold Path as a guide to go inward and forward by asking ourselves, How can I apply the Eightfold Path? It can also be beneficial to use the different sections of the Eightfold Path as an end-of-day reflection. Wise Understanding As we engage in the world, Rather than withdraw from it, we can 
Use wise understanding to live without clinging, attachment, or craving. By paying attention to our actions and the results of those actions, we can begin to change where our choices are leading. If we intend to act in ways that have positive results, and if we're aware of the true intention and the nature of our actions, then you'll see better results, better meaning less suffering and less harm. The word karma in Sanskrit translates to what our actions pre dash eight any intentional act, mental, verbal, or physical, is a kind of karma. Skillful or wise actions strengthen our sense of balance, kindness, compassion, loving, and equanimity. When we act unskillfully or un dash wisely, when we steal, lie, take advantage of somebody else, or cause intentional harm based on our own craving or delusions, it creates an immediate sense of imbalance. It fights with our intention to avoid harming others. Karma is determined by our intention and applies to any volitional or purposeful action. The result of our volitional actions may be an increase in our happiness or may lead to additional suffering. There is no actor apart from action, and there is no action without intention. Unskillful actions leave us less able to meet the next challenge or pain we face. For example, when we steal, we have to immediately justify to ourselves why our greed was more important than the harm we caused. By taking, we must create a cover story, hide our actions, and adjust to the fear of getting caught. Ultimately, if the theft gets discovered, we might have to deal with financial or legal consequences, or face a lack of trust from our community. Similarly, when we're dishonest, we immediately focus energy on maintaining the untruth. We must emotionally carry the potential pain that is caused to others and ourselves if the lie is revealed. This understanding of karma rests on the insight that we are responsible for our own happiness and misery, and there is a cause to every experience of happiness or misery. From a Buddhist point of view, our choices, which are dependent on our present mental, moral, and dash, intellectual, and emotional conditions, decide the effects of our actions. If we act skillfully, with understanding and compassion, it's possible to Trust positive, beneficial effects for ourselves and others. If we act with unskillful intention, we cause our own suffering. This doesn't mean that we always have control over our XP. Dash. Ryan says, no matter how skillfully we act, the external world, people, places, things, societal structures, might not give us what we want. This does not mean we have bad karma or that we failed. It just means that we're not in control of everything and everyone. The point is that, regardless of what the outside world throws at us, we're responsible for how we respond to it and how we tend to our internal world. At the end of the day, we have the choice whether we go to bed as some dash body who acted wisely and compassionately, or as somebody who didn't. It's important to note that being responsible for our own half dash 
happiness and suffering doesn't mean you're responsible for pain inflicted on us by others or by circumstances out of our control. Many of us have experiences of victimization, oppression, and trauma from no fault of our own. The pain from these experiences should be met with compass, dash, scion, understanding, and wise boundaries, not minimized, invalidated, or pushed away. In recovery, we learn that we don't have to add an extra layer of suffering to this pain. We can begin to heal rather than let these experiences or the action of others control and limit us. Without this, dash, counting or ignoring the ongoing effects of trauma in our lives, we begin to understand that our responses when that trauma comes up for us can change our experience of suffering and happiness. The Buddhist perspective is that our present mental, neural, in, dash, intellectual, and emotional circumstances are the direct result of our AC, dash, tie-ons and habits, both past and present. How we choose to respond when confronted with pain or discomfort will change our ability to skillfully deal with suffering when it arises. We can also take solace in the fact that we're not alone, that every person has difficult and unpleasant experience. Dash. S. It's how you respond to pain that determines our experience. Inquiry of wise understanding. Think of a situation in your life that is causing confusion and learning. Dash. Ease. One. What is the truth of this situation? Two. Are you seeing clearly, or are you getting lost in judgment? Taking things personally in stories you're telling yourself, or repeating past messages you've internalized. How? 3. Is your vision clouded by greed, hatred, confusion, clinging, attachment, or craving? How? In what situations and parts of your life do you have the most defeat? Dash. Faulty separating wants from needs. Are there areas or relationships where the drive to get what you desire overshadows any other concept? Dash. Oration. Has this changed since you began or continue in recovery? Are there parts of your life where you are driven to continue on, please? Dash. And experiences because you think you must or need to. How is karma, the law of cause and effect, showing up right now? Where in your life are you dealing with the effects or aftermath of? Action you took in the past, both positive and negative. Rise intention. Rise intention describes the attitude or approach we take to. Dash. Ward ourselves in the world. We can choose non-harming by avoiding. Actions that have harmful results, detaching from the cravings that seem. Overwhelming in the moment and developing a kind and compassionate stance toward ourselves and the world. Wise intention leads us to stop doing things based on confusion, ill will, hatred, violence, and selfish. Dash. Ness. It impacts all our relationships with ourselves, other people, our community, and the world as a whole. Wise intention is deciding to act in ways that produce good car. Dash. Now and to avoid actions that produce bad karma. We start by looking at the kinds of thoughts that cause us to act in wise or unwise ways. If our 
Thoughts are based on conclusion.